Is this a streaming amplifier or a powered streamer? You'll name it. Fact is that this name offers so much more than the modest size makes you expect. And it does it with elegance. The Atom is a total package that only needs a set of speakers and a mains outlet to play music. That doesn't mean it is limited. For those that want more, that's facilitated too. Let's start with speakers that are directly connected to the speaker outlets. The Atom can be, or rather should be, connected to the internet over the router using either a network cable or Wi-Fi. If you have your music on a NAS or computer, that will be automatically connected over the router. That NAS or computer should preferably have a UPnP server program running, which is very easy to set up. If you prefer music from a thumb drive or USB hard disk, these can be connected to the USB ports on the back or on the front. This easy setup can already do a lot. You can have the Atom play the sound of your TV by connecting the HDMI ARC connection on your TV to the HDMI input on the Atom. Or connect the optical output on your TV to one of the optical inputs on the Atom. Be sure to set the digital output on your TV to stereo and not Dolby Digital. The same can be done with a game console. Or you can connect your CD player to either the analog inputs or one of the digital inputs. There even is a possibility to use an optical USB drive as a CD mechanism. Using a simple 3.5 mm jack to double RCA cable you can hook up an MP3 player, smartphone, tablet or computer too. But there are easier ways to connect these wirelessly. For the Atom can also set up a Bluetooth aptX HD connection or play music sent over Chromecast Audio or AirPlay. Getting music from the web is supported through Spotify Connect and Tidal and the Atom can also function as a Rune endpoint. See Rune endpoints in Rune for more details. Controlling the Atom can be done in three ways. Using the buttons on the front, although this is limited to input selection, play pause and choosing favourites. Then there is the remote control and for selecting music, plus all functions also present on the remote control, you can use a tablet or smartphone. Both iOS and Android are supported. If you use Rune, music selection is done using the Rune app. As soon as a track is started, the Atom will switch on from standby and select the Rune endpoint mode while the volume control can also be done in Rune. The Atom is relatively small given the functionality and is built from thick panels of brushed aluminium. It measures 245 by 265 by 95 mm and weighs a hefty 7 kilos. On the front we see a USB-A socket for the storage media, a 3.5 mm headphone jack, the 5 inch color display and four buttons for standby, play pause, input select and favorite radio stations. On top we find a huge volume control. On the rear we find an IEC power socket with integrated views, the loudspeaker sockets that only accept banana plugs, the network socket, a second USB port for storage media, the HDMI connector for hooking up the TV sound, two optical digital inputs, one digital input on RCA, one stereo analog input and an analog stereo preamp output. And then there is a ground lift switch that can be used in case of a ground loop. Try this switch if there is a hum in the sound. Looking inside might void your warranty, so let me take care of that. The first thing to notice is the large toroidal transformer that has two secondary windings. One is used for the digital part and one for the analog part. I also saw many voltage regulators to keep the local voltages stable. The second thing I noted was the metal covered piggyback printed circuit board that I presume is a small board computer. I couldn't find any documentation on it other than that the integrated Bluesound and Wi-Fi radios are certified. Talking of which, 
Name has a very special way of mounting antennas integrated in the cooling profiles. The grey cables connect the Wi-Fi radio to the antennas. Apart from the aesthetic considerations, this construction keeps the RF signal away from the audio cables that are connected to the rear. The Burbrown PCM1791 DAC chip is not used for the filtering but only for converting bits into voltages. The incoming signal is first processed in the shark processor to remove jitter and then upsampled up to 16 times. Only integer upsampling is used, hence the two crystal oscillators, one for 44.1 and one for 48 kHz base sampling rates. After the DAC chip the signal passes an analog filter that uses polystyrene film capacitors. It proves again that looking at a DAC chip only doesn't say much about the sound quality. Then the volume control, which is a digitally controlled analog version. Below this circuit board is a second board that holds the voltage stabilization and buffering and the class AB power amp. No switching mode power supply and no class D. And although these can lead to good results, I often like the old linear power supply in class AB better. Although there are examples to prove the opposite. Mola Mola springs to mind. You might think such a versatile device will be difficult to use. I was rather surprised how user friendly it all is. Of course you do need to know a bit about the user interface, but NAME has fantastic instruction videos on their site that help you through the first steps. And then you see how easy it is. For instance, pairing the bidirectional remote control is a matter of holding it close to the display while holding the home button. If you have two NAME Unity systems, pairing that same remote control to another system is just as easy. This remote control also receives back information from the Atom, like the position of the volume control. It does that using the Zigbee protocol that is also used for home automation. As soon as you want to use music from the server or streaming services like Spotify Connect or Tidal, you really need a tablet or smartphone. By the way, the Atom, like all named products, does not support MQA. I presume that has to do with using their own filtering topology as described before. For those that use the Atom with Rune, you can let Rune do the decoding of the MQA files for 96 kHz. For the rest there is not much to say about the use other than that it is plain simple. I have heard people say that there is a name sound. If that really exists, it surely is not in the Atom. Or, let me rephrase this, if this is the name sound, then it is the sound I like and also have in my setup one. Words that spring to mind are relaxed yet dynamic, good control of lows and sibilants, and a wide and deep yet well defined stereo image for its class. I started listening in my setup too, and there it made the Marantz KI Lite, Chord Mojo and Blue Sound No 2 combinations sound less, so I took the Atom downstairs to the 20K setup 1. Surprisingly it drove the Audio Physics Scorpios quite well. Not to the standard of the equipment that normal drives them of course, the resolution is lower as is the precision of imaging, but I could surely live with the combo since I hear no digital nasties, no sibilance problems, no sharpness. What I hear is music in a rather royal stereo image. It's a small device that shows quality on the outside and high quality on the inside. Even the remote control shows more class than the average run of the mill remote control that many streamers come with. And the iOS app is simple yet versatile. UPnP will never be Rune, but this implementation works smoothly and is intuitive. For those that prefer Rune, that's possible too. Just buy a small computer and a Rune license and the Atom will be the Rune endpoint with the added bonus of having access to Caboose via Rune and Spotify Connect via the Atom. I only had one Unity on loan, but up to six units can be set up in a multi-room system. I know I had 
limited myself to reviewing equipment costing less than 2000 euros, but in this case it's a preamp, a streamer and a power amp in one compact housing. You'll be hard pressed to find the same quality in combining separate components for clearly less than 3000 euros. Unless you like separate components, just for the fun of it or for you prefer to fragment the purchase in biteable bits, this is a very nice and very good sounding solution. That's it for this week. There will be another video next Friday, as always at 5 pm Central European time. If you don't want to miss that, subscribe to this channel or follow me on the social media so you'll be warned when new videos are out. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Many thanks to all that support this channel financially. It keeps me independent and thus trustworthy. If you also feel like supporting my work, the links are in the comments below this video in YouTube. I'm Hans Beekhuizen, thank you for watching and see you in the next show or in the hbproject.com. Whatever you do, enjoy the music.